and speak peace right now. Peace. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace. Calm the storms that are raging right now. I thank you, God, for a peace and a comfort that passes all understanding beyond anything we could even think or imagine. I thank you right now, God, that you're bringing a peace. A peace, God. Direction and clarity. Confusion has to leave. In the name of Jesus, that you direct our steps. And right now, God, you're bringing clarity, clarity to your people, clarity to mind, sound mind, spirit, soul, and body. Right now, peace. I speak of peace right now. And a comfort to your people in the precious name of Jesus. And if you can agree with that, you can say amen. 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 Or you can be seated. Welcome to Passion Church. Whether you're here uh, in-house or maybe you're watching, amen. We just want to welcome you. We're so glad that you're here. And at this time, we will dismiss our children. You can go to the back doors. Back here, we'll have teachers that will uh, help direct them over next door. We're so thankful. We always want to say, never grow tired of saying thank you to our teachers and all of those that volunteer over there with our children of all ages. Please let them know how much you appreciate their ministry because that's our future. That is our future right there, people. And we're so thankful for that. Also, this is Mission Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. Amen is where we always emphasize. Of course, we want to emphasize it every, every week, but especially the first Sunday, we want to recognize. And if you made a faith promise, if not, if you'd like to make one, uh, God speaking to you, just fill out the card. What that does is that we can pray over that and believe with you and for you that God will meet that need that faith promise that you're believing to give into missions that we can come in agreement with you and then that kind of helps us just to kind of see where we are and and you know we set goals as church as a as a corporate uh, all of our campuses come together believe in God to be able to give into missions so that just kind of helps us to see where we are and to believe in God to exceed uh, if we need to above that what people believe that God has spoken to them so we want to give you that opportunity. Uh, there's always a, a place on your envelope there for you to write down and put your missions. Amen. But we want to give you an, also an opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings and special projects here for the building that we're doing. All of those options are on your envelope. If you're watching online, live, or maybe later you're going to tune in on the podcast or YouTube, you can go to mypassion.church. Click on Alex City Campus, then there will be an option there for giving, and you can click on there. It's safe and secure. You can also give by texting, by coming by the church, uh, by mailing it. All of those options are on our website and also on our Facebook page. So I just want to pray with you now. I'm telling you, God is a good God. God is a faithful God. And you can never outgive God. I'm going to tell you that right now. You never, when you give of your monies and of your time, I'll tell you, God puts his super on our natural. So, Father, right now, we just thank you. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give to you, God, during this time, to give of our tithes and our offerings and to give to missions, God, that as we reach right here and reach the nations of the world, we thank you, God, for that awesome privilege and opportunity. And we thank you, God, that as we're faithful to give, God, of our monies to you and of our time, God, that it says you'll pour, open up the windows and pour out a blessing upon our lives that we can't even contain it. God, that spirit, soul, and body, a total package, and we give you all of the praise and all of the glory in Jesus' precious name, and if you can agree with that, say amen. Amen. We're going to bring you the word now. Amen. Praise God. Isn't God a good God? Such a beautiful time of year, and especially here in April, uh, you know, uh, such a special, special time. 
April, of course, is, is about, you know, uh, the Jesus, the resurrection, and what a special, special time. You know, I was noticing, and, and maybe, you know how, um, that sometimes, you know, things maybe have always been there, but then all of a sudden you just begin to just notice and it just seems like this year, for some reason, the dogwoods just seem to be everywhere. And, you know, uh, at one time when we first bought our property about 10 years ago, uh, we were told on that property at one time there was one of the oldest dogwoods that had been on there Coosa in Coosa County. But uh, when we went to go locate it, um, when the owner was showing us apparently it had died and so anyway I don't know over the years we've had that property for 10 years now and I've always told had said to Pastor first I said well we've got to have there's got to be other dogwoods on here but for some reason we just never seen or found them or whatever I don't know maybe we just didn't look at the right time when they were blooming and guess what this year there's dogwoods all over our property you know, and it's like, well, how did we not see that before? How did we not notice? There's one here. There's one there. There's one down there. We were too busy. Just been too busy, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'll just tell you, though, it's just been a beautiful thing. And even while we've been out driving, you know, um, um, on the road, I don't know. It just seems like for some reason this year the dogwoods just seem to really be magnified. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's because there's some special things that, you know, uh, that God is doing uh, in our midst. Amen. You know, we were talking about the legend of the dogwood, that most of the trees are, are they'll only get to a certain size. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, and the flower is, uh, uh, has a story behind of it of the, uh, of the blood of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus. And that the legend is, is that it would never get of any size again where a person could be hung uh, as a tree, uh, the, the legend of the dogwood. I don't know, you know, uh, how much fact or truth there is to that, but it's a good legend. You know, there are some things that are, are, that are uh, good reminders uh, for us. And isn't it also interesting that at this time of year, do you know the month of April, the, the basic uh, where we got the uh, the the word April uh, is from a Latin word Aprilis, and uh, it it basically means to open. It means to open. You know, this is a year of uh, a lot of confusion and chaos and disorder uh, in the world. Uh, but for those that will trust God, it's a time of living out of God's own open hand. You'll yeah. see God's hand opened over uh, our lives. I, I like uh, how God connects a lot of the dots. He's so far into the details. You know, the, the world says the devil's in the details. No, let me tell you what. The devil is such a dodo bird, he can't pay attention long enough. He was in heaven. You know, Lucifer was in heaven. He couldn't pay attention long enough to think that he was a big shot and all that kind of stuff. He fell. He's still failing. I said, he's still failing. They still put little G in underwear. He said, I will be like God. God said, no, you won't. Amen. God is in the details. God is down into the, and such a love letter and sticky notes to our lives that in all of the details, right down to the days and the hours of appointed times, You'll see God intersect uh, uh, important things in your life that lets you and I know, boy, you're loved of God. God knows your name. God knows exactly where you are, your situation, and your circumstance. And so we're going to, uh, uh, we've got three weeks here, this Sunday, next Sunday, and then the following Sunday uh, will be Easter Sunday. It's a very special, significant time of year, I think especially so. Uh, this uh, season and uh, we're going to do a series of three the first one will be the garden which we're going to talk about 
today. The next one will be the cross, and then the last one will be uh, the empty tomb. These are three significant uh, um, moments in time that we see the tremendous movement uh, of God in bringing the kingdom and in the plan of, of restoration, of restoring that which was lost, which was the right relationship between God and his man and woman or the family of God. You know, God has never deviated whatsoever, never changed his mind, never never uh, set his sights on anything or anyone else, but you and I and throughout the generations of having a people for himself. And, and it's, he picked you out. He picked out everyone. The Bible says that hell has to enlarge itself daily. Why is that? Because it was never intended for people to go there. Well, how can a loving God send uh, people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. Our own choices of rejecting Jesus because still there is a heaven. There is a hell. The hell was built for the devil and his angels. But if if the devil is... uh, you know, you're, you're God. If you're attached to him, see, you'll go there too. The only way to change that destiny, uh, because man is born in sin, man is born on the wrong side of it because of what Adam did. The Bible says because of the choice that Adam made, uh, many, uh, many uh, were brought into uh, destruction. But the choice of one man, Jesus, many were made righteous. So you see, it's a choice. Heaven's a choice. Hell is a choice. God as your God is a choice. And the uh, uh, remaining attached to the devil is simply a choice. The Bible says this, that God uh, did, uh, does not condemn the world. He sent his son into the world uh, to save the world and it says but this is the condemnation that when we reject Jesus when you reject the only way the one way I don't know if I'm talking to anybody today but you know you might have got a little confused in your psychology class that there are many ways there's only one way that's Jesus make no mistake about it Make absolutely no mistake. You know, maybe it's time that the church stood for something instead of falling for everything. Trying to be so tasteful to the world. Well, you know, if you don't like if if you don't like the way that God tastes, you sure ain't gonna like me. You know if you don't like the taste of truth, you sure ain't gonna like what the church stands for. Because it's going to have to make some sort of a stand in a world that's gone wrong. Somebody got to stand up and say, no, this is right. Yes. When, they, when we just make up our own rules, and we ask to stand up and say, no, that ain't right. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord, anybody. You might be have, second guessing your, you know, don't touch that dial now. Don't turn the channel here. See, you know, you're here for a reason. God has intersect in your life and you want to know the truth, we're going to tell you the truth. Now, you didn't tune into the wrong place just because it might, you know, shine a little light in your eyes and you're so used to the dark. You stay right there right now. See? Because the choice to turn the dial, you might be turning down the best offer you've ever had in your lifetime. You might be you might be tuning out. You've tuned out God for too long. It's time to tune in and turn on the light and get some and and shed some truth in the matter because it is life and death, heaven and hell, blessing and the curse that's at stake here. So don't you go nowhere for a little while. The Bible says a fool makes a decision before he knows all the facts. Let's get the facts on the table before you turn down heaven and turn the other way. Amen. Amen. You got anything Amen. you want to say out of that? No. I'm just going to pray. You're going to pray? Yeah. Go ahead, baby. Father, Amen. we just thank you, God, for today. We thank you for your word. Oh, Lord, help us say what you want us to say. Yes. Let their hearts be open to hear and to receive. 
We thank you, God, that good seeds are being planted mm -hmm. today, Father, yeah. and that we're not just hearers of the word, but we will be doers. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 26. This is going to be in the Passion Translation. We're going to start in verses 36 through 45. Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. Then Jesus led his disciples to an orchard called the oil press. He told them, sit here while I go and pray nearby. He took Peter, Jacob, and John with him. However, an intense feeling of great sorrow plunged his soul into agony. And he said to them, My heart is overwhelmed and crushed with grief. It feels as though I'm dying. Stay here and keep watch with me. Then he walked a short distance away, and overcome with grief, he threw himself face down on the ground and prayed. My father, if there's any way you can deliver me from this suffering, please take it from me. Yet what I want is not important, for I only desire to fulfill your plan for me. Then an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him. Later he came back to his three disciples and found them all sound asleep. He awakened Peter and said to him, Could you not stay awake for me for even one hour? Keep alert and pray that you'll be spared from this time of testing. Your spirit is eager enough, but your humanity is weak. Then he left them for a second time to pray in solitude. He said to God, My Father, if there's not a way that you can deliver me from this suffering, then your will must be done. He came back to the disciples and found them sound asleep, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he left them and went away to pray the same prayer for the third time. When he returned again to his disciples, he awoke them saying, Are you still sleeping? Don't you know the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the authority of sinful men? Boy, there's a lot in there. Can't stay all day, but we'll get you along your way. Number one, the uh, want to bring this out: the tipping point. You know, when a tipping point is when it can go one way or another, and where everything hangs in the balance of a choice, one choice. I believe that we're in just. A time and a, a tipping point, uh, not just in natural history, but on the timetable and the time clock of God, in the things of the kingdom, in the destiny of mankind. There are times when, you know, uh, you know, we're not, um, you know, we're not in our thirties or forties or fifties even. You know, we've crossed some lines in time here where. Uh, what's what? It's it's not the nickels or the noses. It's not everybody pats you on the back and you know you get validated uh, uh, because of this or that. You know we uh, we've been at this long enough to to boil it down to what really matters most. And what matters most is that people have an opportunity to hear the truth and weigh that truth out for yeah. themselves not about hyping people up and saying you know this is the uh this is the latest and the greatest w uh, wind of doctrine to sway you one way or the other i'm telling you i sense by the spirit of god we're at a tipping point and choices will be made choices are being made uh to go god's way or go the other way because really there are only two ways there is, and Jesus uh, shows us this. You know, in times of trouble, you'll find they really run parallel with tipping points. Tipping points are always most often found during times of trouble. Troubling times. Difficult times. Now, uh, if you think it's, it, I like this where it says that Jesus led his disciples to a garden. Uh, known as uh, 
or orchard known as uh, the oil press. You know, if you're going to follow Jesus, you're not going to skip pressure or pain or problems. You're going to be in it with him. But the deal is, is that you're with him. Aren't you glad he led his disciples? But he did the heavy lifting. They were asleep, but he did the heavy lifting. You know, how many am I, am I talking to anybody today that might need the Lord to do some of the heavy lifting? I believe I'm talking to people today son, that, that, that feel pain, that have pressure. There are problems that you are facing. And it, I'm glad for a captain of our salvation that was tempted in every let me say something about temptation here he said pray that you will not enter into the temptation temptation going to come but you don't have to enter into it that's right are you listening amen if you just take an hour to pray before you signed on a dotted line for that thing you just got to have that shiny thing that devil dangling thing Anyhow, times of trouble are most often where we find the tipping point. So, so we see Jesus. In order to see Jesus, you've got to look to Jesus. Jesus is the example. He is the captain of our salvation. He has been through it. He knows what it feels like. He understands our makeup. He understands what we are. But the Bible says there is no temptation that has come to a man that's outside of man's experience. Yet the Lord, everybody say the Lord. See, God will make a way of escape. What, what did Jesus turn to? Well, the, the garden, the Gethsemane, the, uh, uh, historically, and it's written in the scriptures, it said they went there often to pray. It was Jesus prayer place it was isn't it interesting that pressure and prayer kind of should go together if you're looking to Jesus and following Jesus you'll find Jesus uh, when pressure came and this is no ordinary pressure this is this is where it all hangs in the balance and have you ever been in a place where it felt like that it all hung in the balance that it was for, quote, all the marbles, so to speak, you know. You know where that saying comes from? When I, when we, when I was a kid, we would, we would shoot marbles. They don't do that anymore, but we would, uh, during mud season in April up north, you know, we'd make these, we'd make a little pocket in the mud, and, uh, and then we'd shoot marbles. I mean, it was a big thing. You'd buy a big old bag for a dime or 15 cents, and then, uh, you know, whoever had to, you know, winners and losers where that's concerned. But, you know, you, you'd get certain marbles and they'd be in the pot. Everybody would get a shot. And the one that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the one that, um, you know, got to, uh, had the last say, got all the marbles. And it was for all of the marbles. They would come down where everybody played their last one. Anyhow, just for your information, them was the good old days. That was back when comedy was clean. Are you listening? I mean, most stuff, you didn't have to filter it like you do today because it's so filthy. Well, we're way over here in the, in the weeds, ain't we? Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Times of trouble are tipping points. There is not so big a mess, so so big a thing that the devil has done or is doing but what the anointed one and his anointing has come to undo what the devil has done that God cannot undo what the devil has done no matter what the problem or the pressure or the pain God has a way of escape that is going to be victorious that's for all of the marbles. The devil has made a play for your life, but I'm going to tell you what now, God's got a whole lot more than the devil ever thought of having. God's making a play for you at the very same time, and God intends 
to win. He is in it to win it. Am I talking to anybody today? Seem like sometimes you got to raise your voice because people are hard of hearing. It's part of the healing to, to you know, Jesus prayed for one guy and uh, he said, what you see now? And he said, well, I, uh, I, I couldn't see, but I can see. But he said, I, I see men, but they look like trees walking. Jesus said, come on over here. You need a second dose of the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes you say a thing and then the next time it's like, can you hear me now? The next time you got to raise your voice because folks get hard of hearing. Amen. We close our ears because the, all the bad news is so bad. We, 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 we wind up a little deafened when we come in here. We still got that ringing in our ears. When we come to the good news, the preacher got to holler just a little bit. Now, if hollering helps, I guess we'll holler. It's foolishness, I know, but through the foolishness of preaching, the Bible says, God's chosen that as a plan to help people to be saved. Amen. So we look to Jesus. Where it felt like that you were in the oil press. You know, uh, we've been to Israel, you remember, going to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there are olive trees that are hundreds, maybe centuries old in that garden. Massive, beautiful, beautiful place right in the heart uh, of uh, Jerusalem there. And uh, just, just beautiful. Um, and, but there was a, a, there, that's the top part of the garden is, is mainly uh, the, the olive grove. Down as you come, it's on a hillside. It's very hilly there. And you come down, and there, there's a cave there. And actually, they, they have that now set up as, a, of course, a tourist attraction. Everybody wants to visit there when they go to the Holy Land. But you remember that cave. Uh, and, and it was said, see, in, back in, the, uh, in, in Bible days, see, caves like that were where... where uh, Shepherds would, would fold their sheep at night and the shepherd would sleep in the mouth of the caves between danger, any outside danger, and the sheep being safely in that sheepfold. One translation says in this thing that Jesus, when praying, it said that and in a little further. What did he go into? He went into that cave a little deeper. You know, he went, we could the final the the final phase of that prayer is that he went uh the place where the sheep were in the midst of in the midst of the flock you know i remember uh, having such a powerful encounter uh with god at that at that place just such a sense of the weightiness of 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 the moment and of the glory of God and what was at stake and what Jesus might have felt just for a moment, you know, no, nowhere near. What, but as a shepherd, how his heart would have felt. Uh, not just towards, as a natural shepherd, towards sheep, but uh, natural sheep, but what the heart of the shepherd must have felt for the sheep that were, that he was... Uh, that he was longing to deliver and to keep them safe, to make them safe, to save them. It's a powerful, powerful thing. The place of prayer is a powerful thing. The oil press. You know, I believe that this is a year of extra oil. You want to you wanna make sure in your preparations for what's next for the future that you uh, bring some extra oil. Fill your lamp, but bring some extra oil. Pay a little extra attention this year to the Lord. You that are listening and watching, uh, watching us uh, here today, you know, you need a little extra oil. You might want to pay extra attention to what's being said here today. The Lord would save you. Some of you are, are I feel the Spirit of God in this. Uh, has said, well, you know, I don't know how, as bad as I've been, you're the very one. You're the very one. Aren't you glad that 
when Jesus hung on the cross, there was one of them cursed him and the other one called him Lord, Master. Mm -hmm. He said, remember me. And the Lord said, I'm telling you, see, you're, gonna, you're with me here on this cross, but you're going to be with me in paradise yes. today. Amen. Yeah. There's nothing that the devil has done or, or you have done that the Son of God cannot undo. Yes, he can save you yes. if you want to be saved. Yes. And I yes. believe you do. Let's pray right now. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Lord, save me. Save me from my ha my, myself. Save me from this world. Save me from a devil's hell. In Jesus' name, I believe you can. And I believe you will. I believe you are right now. Amen. Now listen. If the Bible says when we confess our sin to him, you know, if you've been rejecting him, you know, uh, that's the ultimate sin that'll get you in hell. It's not smoking, doping, and running women or running men or all, oh, whatever, you know, whichever one you run. I mean, you don't know today, you might be running either one, you know. Uh, but anyway, you know, that, that's not the deal, see. That's not going to keep you out of heaven. What will keep you out of heaven is rejecting Jesus. Yes. That, yes. And, and how you reverse that is you accept Jesus. You just accept him. There's never been a better time than right now. Congratulations if you made that decision. You that are at the tipping point, make that decision. You have a choice. That's what we're talking about today. Jesus, we see him praying under pressure and overcoming the overwhelming. Sometimes we're, we're, we're a little lax. We don't believe that, you know. He said this, I just wanted to die. I'm at the place that I feel like I, I, I just can't take this. Have you ever been at that place? There are people all around you. They may put on a smile, but inside they're dying. Inside they're wanting to die. But Jesus knows. And we see him... Oh, this scripture where the first time that he prayed he said I want to fulfill your plan for me mm -hmm. it says then an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him an angel appeared from heaven to strengthen Jesus he prayed three times what would that be spirit soul and body it needed to be settled one yeah. translation said in another place when he came the second time uh, to his disciples, he said, he said, you're, you're, you're just so sleepy, you can't stay awake. He yeah. said, you need to pray because he said, your body will betray you. Your body will betray you. You know, uh, we are spiritual beings. We have a soul, a will, a mind, and an emotion. But we also live in a body. And the devil tempted Jesus yeah. Like he tempts us in that the first temptation was the body. If you're the son of God. Well, of course he was. You know, the first temptation, physical, the outside. Second temptation was, uh, and testing, was in the soulish realm. Isn't that right? The will, the mind, the emotion. The last one was a uh, was a spiritual see jesus reversed the order here he said if there is another uh way but he settled that that first time in his spirit because he come back the second time he said uh, uh he said this um you know no matter what the way i'm committed to that i'm absolutely committed to it so he turned to god the only way uh, to overcome the overwhelming is to turn to God. The tipping point during times of trouble was turn to God. Where else are you going to turn? I said, where else are you going to turn? To the world? Have you noticed that the world's kind of in a whirlwind? It's in the great white bowl, not the white throne of judgment yet, just the white bowl. Turning, turning, turning. Headed towards the cesspool and God knows where from that. It isn't getting better out there. We're not called to make it better out there. We're called to call people out of there. 
We're not called to make, you know, bad men good. We're called to make, we're called to call dead men to life. We're called to get folks in the ark, the good old gospel ship that's going to get out of here. Well, you're just escapism. Honey, you better want to escape what's coming on the world. Are you listening? You don't hear much about this, though, do you, anymore? No, you don't hear. You don't hear about, uh, you know, what's coming. Let me tell you what's coming. They ain't going to tell you this on CNN, NBC, Fox, and Friends, and all them other folks because they, they don't read the Bible. You understand? Let me tell you what's coming. Trouble. Real trouble. That you, like Peter stood up. He said, I'm going to tell you what now. He goes, there's trouble in generation well pastor you need to be more positive than that i'm positive trouble's coming i read the end of the book i mean you that just seems so negative not for the believer amen we better be paying attention to the row we're on we're responsible to uh turn this generation to god not just you turn to god but but turn this generation to god See, Jesus in turning to God, it wasn't just about him now, was it? He said, is there any other way? When we turn to God, is there any other way? That's a reasonable question. But, you know, there is no other way than surrendering to God's will. The release and the relief comes out from underneath the, of the pressure is when we surrender to God's will and God's way. We don't bring our own interpretation to God's will. It's possible that we know the will of God, but we want to bring our own twist and interpretation to that. Isn't that what Jesus was tempted with here? He goes, is there any other way? And, of course, there wasn't. Isn't it interesting that the, fa the, the father sent an angel to strengthen him, but he still had to pray two more times before he got it settled on the inside of him? In his heart, in his mind, and he got his body under control. Did he need to? Well, absolutely. His body was feeling the pressure. It says he sweat great drops of blood. Isn't that right? As yeah. great drops yeah. of blood. He had to conquer all three. You know, you and I got to conquer all three. But you start with the spiritual. If you're having trouble with your body, start with your heart. Yield to God. Submit to God. Don't yield to sin. No, we can't change ourselves, but we can change. We can choose to change. Amen. It's all right. I'll take the hammer and hit the rock, you know. The, the hammer of God's word will break the rock in pieces because sometimes we just get hardened because we excuse ourselves. As long as you have an excuse, you'll miss the kingdom of God. Are you listening? None of them that do these things will ever see the kingdom of God. You can't excuse the flesh. You can't excuse the flesh. You can't excuse the old nature. You got to get a new nature and live in that. Live as a new man. Put off the old man and live, on, live out the new man. Amen? How do I do that? Well, when you first get born again, raised from the dead, you're wrapped in grave, in grave clothes. And so folks have to help you a little bit and unwrap you. We have to unwrap you. Remember, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, it's not you. You're alive again, but the grave clothes might still stink like dead stuff. That's why we got to get the old stinky dead stuff off on you. <laughs> Remember that commercial with the little uh, Cheerios guy? The little boy comes in, the mom and dad are in bed, and... And uh, uh, he comes in and he says, what's this? He's got a bowl of Cheerios. He goes, we got to get that cholesterol off of you. <laughs> you gotta get the, we got to get the old man, the old stinky stuff off of you. <laughs> Amen. We'll fee we need to give you some spiritual Cheerios right here. Cheer you on. You can do this. Yeah. You can live this new life. But you got to live it from the inside out, turning towards God every yeah. time. Surrendering to the will of God. You don't have to yield your members, the Bible says, to sin. To the junk anymore. Amen. A lot of people, the excuse is, is that, you know, you can't live this thing. No, you can't in the old man of the flesh, but you can live this out of the new man and the new heart that you have. 
You can get that body delivered. This deliverance from Jesus was absolute and complete salvation, spirit, soul, and body, wholeness and soundness for your life. I feel like I'm just throwing, you know, throwing the hammer against the rock, but I'll keep throwing it till the rock breaks. We got to have, we got to get some breakthrough for you today. Need to crack that old hard surface junk. Amen. <laughs> and it's going to be through prayer. Yeah. Prayer is what's going to bring the breakthrough. Talk to me about prayer, in Mama. In our lives, you know, because, you know, without prayer, then there won't be any change. The problem is, though, we don't want to pray, you know. We want to tell God what to do, but we don't want to spend time in prayer, you know, where we're actually asking God, what is it that you want me to do? And now let you know, and then let me actually pray for someone and not telling God what you want, God, how to change them. You know, first you need to be praying, God, change me, help me to do better, help me to love better, help me to be a witness, and it'll be a whole lot better than when we pray one for another because we can actually pray with the heart of God. But in prayer, pressing into prayer is the only thing that brings breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And then once you've prayed, then we've got to go over into praise and begin to thank God for what he's already done. Yeah. You know, we pray, we give it over to mm -hmm. God, and then we praise him and say, thank you, God, for what you've already mm -hmm. done and for what you're doing in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We've got to pray it through. Pray it through means praying through it. You're not through till inside of you, you have the answer. The answer had to have come from the inside of Jesus because it doesn't say God spoke with a booming voice. It says an angel came and strengthened him. You know, angels are sent to help us, but they can't do it for you. It strengthened him. The first time he prayed, he still went back and prayed two more times the same prayer. How is that that Jesus that Jesus would have to pray three times. He had to pray it through. How did he know he was through? Well, he said, here they come. But he was ready. He never opened his mouth another time until the high priest uh, said, I command you to tell me in, in God's name whether or not you are the Messiah. And he said, you said it. You said it. I am. Are you listening? That's the only thing, you know. Uh, and he went, listen, he found when, when we turn to God and we pray it through, listen, uh, then in order for things to turn out right, we have to turn to God. Mm -hmm. And we have to pray through it until it turns on the inside of us. Until the problem has, uh, has uh, become been changed into now we're living like Pastor Sandy said the promise and the when you're living in the promise it will be praise well and there comes a subtleness where now you have Absolutely. actually know yeah. that you know that you know that you know mm -hmm. that breakthrough mm -hmm. that the breakthrough is there breakthrough is coming because you believe God now at his word mm -hmm. it's not just something you just say you know, when we pray through it, then we come to a place where it's down in us and it's settled. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what God has said mm -hmm. for me. That's what God has said about my situation. That's what God has said. You know, that I've been delivered. I've been set free. I've been healed. I've been made whole. I got the, the, the mind of Christ. Yeah. I have peace. I have joy. It's settled. We've got the victory. Mm -hmm. When it gets settled, then it's sealed. Now you can begin to praise him. Praise him. You remember when we were, uh, second trip that we went to Israel. They say a trip to Israel is as good as, Pastor Ronnie Trice said this. He said it's as good as one year in Bible. To, uh, we went to uh, the high priest's house where they took Jesus first and there was a, a there was um, a stairway down to it but it was it was a, a, a like a cell basically a room mm -hmm. underneath the floor of the house carved out of stone mm -hmm. and it said that's that they had 
put Jesus uh, uh, down there while the Sanhedrin was gathered and all. And against the wall, you remember that? Against the wall. It was, it was, uh, it was like a stain against the wall. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't in the stone, but it was on the stone. But it was, it was deep enough that nobody had painted it on there. Anything, but you remember that? It was like someone's head was against it, the outlines of the arms and the back uh, against the wall. You know, and uh, um, you know, he could just imagine Jesus being down uh, in that holding uh, place. You know, having come from the garden here, the next thing before the cross, and he was going to be uh, abused and and beaten and stood trial falsely accused. The Bible says that they lined up the Sanhedrin and they all spat in his face and slapped him and all that. But down there in that thing, and I remember at the time uh, that that song came up inside of me when I saw that image against the wall, that song goes, Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am, you're my God. All together, amen, worship. Who I am, what I do, everything I have belongs to you. What a powerful. I know a name that is greater than any need, greater than any pain or pressure or problem. It is the name of this Jesus. This one who chose the will of the Father the way of the Father, the purpose and the plan and the promise of the Father. The Bible says that he endured all of that for the joy that was set before him. What would that joy be? Everything turning out right. Everything being made new. Everything being restored that was lost. He looked down through time saw you lost and undone he said I'm going to get this fixed I'm going to be the seed for you as the harvest it's going to be alright it's going to turn out right because I'm turning to God and God's going to turn all this thing around hallelujah you know when we come to these tipping points in times of trouble and we turn to God and we can expect it to turn out right because there's grace for that place. There's grace for the place where we have to face the facts and face the situations and face the pain and the problems and the pressures and we overcome the overwhelming that's Jesus. The Bible says if he said this, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. I just believe that this is a time yes. when there's a pull, isn't there? Yes. There is a pull. There's a pull from God. The Holy Spirit is pulling people, drawing people near to God. Don't miss this moment and this opportunity yes. uh, and this time frame because it's so significant. I don't... I don't know if in my life that I've ever sensed such a significant time frame as what we're in right now, especially in this Easter season where God is opening his hand of invitation. Pastor Ron, if you'll come, and we want to just take a moment here to give people an opportunity Both saints and sinners. Yes. Don't be offended by that word. It wasn't a problem for me to admit that I was a sinner and I needed to be saved by grace. 
But you know, once uh, God does this, his grace turns sinners into saints. Well, I'm no saint. Well, you need to be. Don't get so offended by that word. Well, you holier than thou folks. Well, listen, without holiness, being separated from sin. Holiness means separated. Without being separated from sin. And don't stop there. And separated unto God. See? I remember where we were crossing the border over there in Israel. It's, Israel's going to be such a fun place to visit. Even after the rapture, we'll all have homecomings where we go to headquarters and meet with the Lord. Amen. It's like going and, and looking at the family album. And, you know, God will encounter you there. I never saw the need to go. You know, I really didn't. But thank God he did and made a way two times for us. But um, if you ever get the opportunity, if God puts that desire in your heart, go. He'll meet you there. Remember, we had a, a guy named Gadon, and he was in the Six Day War. What a character! Just a believer. I remember, I remember uh, one time uh, him saying, uh, um, "Come to." It was in the centurions. Uh, it was in the place where they stripped Jesus and beat on him the the Roman soldiers, and it was such a presence of God. And I remember him coming, he goes, perhaps, he said, you could, you could have some healings and some miracles. What a, a Jewish believer, but it's like understood, understood they had the book and they had the God of the book and the, the God of the book was a healing God. And a miracle God and a God who meets with us. I remember we were at a, uh, a, a, a military crossing to go over into Bethlehem because Bethlehem had been given over to the Palestinians. And uh, we, we, we were snuck around the back way, but we were coming back through. We went around the checkpoint, went up a bunch of alleys, up through houses. You remember that? And went in. <laughs> God's sneaky sometimes, ain't he? Get you where he wants you to go. But on the way back, we're going through the military uh, uh, checkpoint and Gadon standing there and uh, you know the young people are all conscripted into the military for two years so they turn 18 they serve uh, so they're all young people there and, and machine guns I mean you know the real deal sandbags and you know I mean so we're going through and Gadon's standing in there and he and and people we're going through this little sandbag you know and uh, fortress type alleyway and uh, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, you know, this one, this one, this one, this one. He came at Sandy was in front of me, and, and uh, uh, he let, let Sandy go through, and he goes, hold, hold, hold up, I'm, I'm next. He goes, hold. He said, not this one. He goes, uh, uh, he goes, don't worry, Bruce, I take good care of Sandy. I said, get on. He goes, no, he's with me, it's okay. It's a funny story, but you know, you want to be with the Lord. You want to be, you want the Lord to say, it's okay, he's with me. She's with me. Let them pass through. Because there's coming a checkpoint. There's coming a checking in. And there's coming a checking out in this life. I ask you to check out your life right now. Who are you with? Are you with Jesus? Yes. Have you made the choice, a cornerstone choice that's absolutely essential where you have surrendered your will? You have surrendered your life to Jesus. This is for the Christian, and this is for the one who is not a Christian today. Have you made that decision in which there is no turning back? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I have decided to follow Jesus. Let me invite you today. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm not a preacher of doom and gloom. I'm, I'm looking forward for the appearing of the Lord. 
I don't know this, the day or the hour, but I don't believe that we're further from it. I think we're closer to it than ever before. For Israel is now a nation. The world is in chaos and turmoil. The future is not assured us except for what God has said about the future. And the only thing that I know is like Noah, in the days of Noah, everybody was carrying on just like life was going to go on and on and on. But Noah preached for a hundred years. And people turned a deaf ear because he talked about something that was going to happen that had never happened. He had never experienced it before. But the Lord gave him assignment. He said, build the ark by faith. Build an ark for the saving of your family. Let me ask you, are you in this ark? Are you in the ark called the church? A lot of people have been in the church and walked away from the church and think that God's done with church. Honey, God's just getting started good with the church. And the Bible says that's indicative of the last days. It said there will be a great falling away where the love of many will grow cold because of what's happening in the world. You know, growing cold is like it once was hot, but you take it off of the burner and now it just slowly comes then down to room temperature. And eventually it comes to coldness. Not even lukewarm anymore, just cold. The love of many, not just for uh, one another. And aren't we living in a loveless world where, where, where people have devalued human life to the degree that we can walk on by. Degree that we, can, that we can just turn aside and go to the other side of the road when the brother's in the ditch dying. When the baby's in the womb being ripped apart. When... And I know these are hard things, are harsh, but, you know, consider what God hears and what God sees. And, and the Bible says in Sodom and Gomorrah that, and it says it'll be like that in the last days as well. It's in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said this, the cries have risen up to heaven and I've got to go check it out if it's as bad as it sounds. I'm going to see if it's as bad as it sounds let me tell you something you need to make a decision you can't change everything but you need to let God change you change your mind and change your heart and change your life and get your ticket to ride today let's pray Father in the name of Jesus oh Holy Spirit throw the net and draw in a great draw of fish of all kinds, everywhere, near and far, today and from this day forward, the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ready. Lord, you're ready to fill the boats. You're ready to bring people safely into the ark of safety. We thank you, called the church. Yes, we need you. But you're in the church, Lord. You're building your church, Lord. Not an organization, but a people, a living, breathing organism. Father, a people formed for yourself. God, I pray that today that you would pull by the Spirit of God people across that line. Make an opening in the wall, a way of escape today in the name of Jesus. Somebody's listening to me right now. You have been bound and changed and Jesus sets you free right now. Every excuse, every reason why, every argument that has raised itself against what I'm telling you right now, you are free to choose Jesus today. Do it right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. And when you do, you're going to find that God has, has already, already, already going to, you're going to hear it in your heart. Come on home, son. Come home, daughter. Wayward one, come home. There's nothing that you have done that I can't undo right this very moment. Come home. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. I remember a day when, when I heard that and I heard the voice within the voice and I remember the old song that they used to sing in the Billy Graham Crusades. It says, just as I am.
just as I am, I come. Just come as you are right now. Come as a broken, perverted, wrong, undone individual. And watch God clean you up and make you new and change you from the inside out. And I declare your life will never be the same. Never, ever, ever be the same. If you made that decision right now, listen, it doesn't really matter. The words you say on the outside, it's what you're saying on your inside. In your heart, say yes to God. Say yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, the Spirit of God is working. Yes, Lord Jesus. Say it one more time with me. Yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus, not my will, but your will be done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, you have anything you want to say? I just want to say, you know, that God will give you the grace to face whatever you're facing. You know, maybe you're still thinking about coming to him, or maybe you are a believer, but you've been kind of on the outside looking in. You've kind of stepped away and stepped back. Or maybe, you know, you're a believer and you're saying, man, I'm going through stuff. And why am I facing this? And why is it so hard? But God said today, he's not the one that brought the trouble, but he'll give us the grace to face it. He'll give you the grace to be in your place. He'll give you the grace and the strength to move on. So I just want to pray for you right now where you just really feel like maybe you've been just struggling and struggling. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's easy sometimes, too, to listen to the enemy and start blaming God or start asking God, well, what have I done? You know, am I that much of a mess up that I just seem like I keep dealing with the same thing over and over and over again? And look at this one and look at that one. And they don't seem to have any trouble. Everybody's got trouble. Some you're seeing and some you're not. But everybody's yeah. dealing with something. But today, God wants to really shed his love and his grace on you. So, Father, right now, I just thank you. I thank you for those that have maybe been questioning and struggling, God, within. That, God, that today you give them a peace and a clarity, and you just show them your grace and your mercy, God. And that you're right there. And that they'll just reach out to you, God, that you're going to walk them through this. You're going to deliver them yes, God. because it's, the fight is not for where we are but yes, the fight is for where you want to take us today Lord. Yes, Lord so we just thank you God that we are overcomers and we're on the road to victory and that we thank you Father right now for your grace getting us in that place for your grace surrounding us God and walking us through this and the strength your super on our natural God but now we're going to begin to see it or them the way you see it. And no more are we going to see ourselves the way we see ourselves, but see ourselves in your eyes. Victorious. Yes, Lord. Whole. Healed. Full of peace and joy. Yes. Full of your grace and your mercy and your love. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I want to just speak to people today that uh, you came in here and you're suffering pain. You're under great pressure. There's tremendous problems. Well, just like Jesus, I want to encourage you today. Turn that pressure into prayer. Bring those problems to him in prayer. There's going to be pain in this life. There's pain in childbirth. Jesus said right now, you're sorrowful. Just moments before, he said, right now you're sorrowful. Your hearts are heavy. He said, but I'm telling you, he said, in 
just a little while, he said, just like a woman giving childbirth, she has pain, he said, but there's a joy that's coming. Let me tell you, surrendering to the will of God, saying yes to Jesus. And I'm talking specifically to people, the pressure is about you being a witness and the people on the other side of your choices today as a Christian, as a believer. Perhaps you've just been born again. The good news, Jesus gets the worst one first. And it's still not just all about you because you've been a witness one way to your family, but God's going to use you to be a witness another way. Because in a moment, there's one thing, one choice, one thing that can change everything, and that is surrendering to Jesus. I want to pray a prayer of deliverance from you because you may be stuck in the present moment. You've got the weightiness of the baggage you've been carrying around, the failures of the past, the, all of the reasons why God can't use you or God won't use you. And, you know, you feel like you need to get your life all together before God can do anything with you. I thank you that Jesus is probably in in the most broken, contrited, troublesome time in his life. And that not even of his own making. And he had his own personal preferences where that was concerned of, you know, life would be easier. But Sam and I talked about this this morning. He said he could have said, you know, it's not worth it. But in doing that, he would have had to believe that you were not worth it. And he absolutely said yes to God. Let me tell you something. You may not feel like it's worth what you're going through right now, that it's worth yeah, but let me tell you, there are other people that are going through things just like you are, maybe even worse than you are. And let me tell you, they are worth it. And you got to make that decision today. Who am I talking to today? If that's you want, you just stand up. We're going to go off the air in just a second. But I want to let people in, uh, in on this because I'm telling you, God needs somebody that when your back's up against the wall and you're in that holding place and you know what's, you're, you're facing the cross and you're, you're, you know, you're in the place where your accusers are in your face. And, you know, the, uh, but he said men are not going to decide this about me the devil's not going to decide me because here I am to worship here I am to bow down to the will of God here I am to say you are my God and I'm yours so who am I talking to today listen I'm going to break something off of you today God is going to break open there are going to be outbursts and out and out outbreaks of the kingdom of God in your life and God's will and God's way and God's power God's going to send angelic reinforcements to strengthen you in your witness for him am I talking to somebody that really deep down in your heart you want to be who God wants you to be stand up right now I'm going to pray for you you're at home stand up make some kind of a move lay your hand on your phone lay your hand on the TV wherever it is your computer screen as a point of contact because right now I'm telling you there is a breaking open of the kingdom of God like never before the little alabaster box of your life is going to break open. We're going to pour it out onto Jesus' feet and, 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 and acknowledge Him today. You may not understand what that means. It means all I, here I am, God. I'm offering you all I am, all I have, all I've been, everything I'm not, but everything I've got, I'm going to use it for you. God, I want you to use me. I'm talking to somebody. God's calling you. He's been calling you for a long time and you've stepped over every excuse. I'm calling on you today. To come to Jesus and answer the call. You're the one. He's chosen you. Right where you are. You might be in jail. 
You might be in the worst predicament of your life. You might be in a wrong relationship, a wrong situation, the toughest spot you've ever been in. But I'm telling you, God's still got a call on you and God's hand is open in the invitation. And if you'll take this hand today, I'll tell you, God's going to bring you out. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. The anointing of the anointed one undoes what the devil has done this very moment. The anointing of the anointed one breaks the heavy yoke and lifts the burdens. In Jesus' name, Lord, you chose us. And now we choose you to obey you, to surrender to your will and to surrender to your way. You are going to have a people. You are going to have a mighty giant, a mighty sleeping giant awakened in this time. I thank you, God. This April, this season, these next few weeks, Father, there's going to be an outburst of your joy, your presence, your glory like never been seen before in the name of Jesus. How many of you want God to use you? How many of you want God to use you? How many of you want God to, you want to see the hand of God? I'll tell you, God's going to slip his hand up inside. There are going to be healings and miracles released like never before. They're going to be the witness and like never before. In and through your life in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Listen, our prayer for you always is that you would know how very blessed you are and that you would purpose to be a blessing and have a heart at rest. The Bible says all of these things are simply signs. They're the beginning of the birth pains. They're the beginning of a breaking forth of what God's going to do next. And I'll tell you, he's going to sweep multitudes into the kingdom of God. He's going to, as some of them even this week, some of them today, some of them tomorrow, some of them this week, it has begun. It has begun. It begins in the place, the secret place of prayer that begins in the olive press, but the oil extra is, is going to flow. The spirit of God is going to flow mightily. The presence of God, the glory of God, filling every nook and cranny, every, every town and hamlet, every great city upon the earth. It has begun the countdown. Thank you, Lord. He says, see that no man deceive you and don't let your heart be troubled. I declare that the power of deception is broken off of your life and that, the, that your heart would find a place of rest, the rest of faith in Him. Until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you. May the Lord grant you His favor and His peace. Amen.